Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be doing something different. We're going to step away a little bit from the drives and uh, we're going to look into Mitsubishi PLCs and the, the subject today we're going to be doing is how do we go from this guy FX1N to oh just lost the cover this guy FX3G is he? yeah FX G. So basically these two are uh, related. Uh, this is the older brother and this is a newer brother. So these are uh, pretty much uh, have a full crossover and I will show be showing you today how to do that with uh, GX uh, Works 2. So before we get started ladies and gentlemen, I have several of these PLCs on my eBay page and don't think it's on the website but it's definitely on my eBay page uh, if you're looking to uh, find them. And once they're gone, if I can't replenish them, I don't usually do that. So I'm going to leave uh, the link in the description below for a company called LC Automation. It's a great company with a very, very good prices for a Mitsubishi product. Pretty much they are the Mitsubishi distributors. So I'll definitely go to the website and check it out. And if you're looking for 10% discount, get in touch. I just like Tony will definitely be able to help you out with that. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we go. So here's both PLC standing side by side. There is not much of a difference uh, in the in in the, in, the, in, the, in the PLCs itself. The only difference between the uh, FX3G and FX1N is that there's a difference in height in here. So uh, that's something to look out for because I have had one machine that was so tight with the cables where the PLC needed to be changed that uh, I had to redo all the cables <laughs> literally because it was just not enough to a, uh, achieve the, the, the height of it. But that's, uh, that, could, that could be literally in a very, very rare occasions. Another difference in is, it is that, uh, where's that, uh, here we go. So therefore to uh, download the program out of the FX1N, you will need the SC09 cable looks like that, which has got RS232 port in the end. I will leave the video in the description for the video when I did the uh, uh, Mitsubishi. I uh, can't remember which video it was when I showed the, the uh, little RS232 converter to USB. So we can uh, download the program into our uh, PC in case you don't have a laptop with RS232 port. And But this guy in here has got built in uh, USB. So uh, that's, that could be directly, uh, no need for any fancy dancy cables. You will just be fine with just a USB. And plus our SC09 cables are no longer manufactured by Mitsubishi. So there is a lot of uh, counterfeits, I would call them, or replicas out there. But uh, be sure to buy them from uh, uh, known suppliers because sometimes you, sometimes you get these cables from eBay and they don't really work properly. So I have heard a lot of things of that as well from other people. So, so be sure to, to, to uh, buy the SC09 cables from unknown suppliers. So, uh, and regarding a swap power is actually quite dead forward. As you can see down there, you got two screws in here. Let's just cut this one up. Uh, and in here in the bottom as well, same as this guy in here. It's got two screws, basically hold this block just comes away. It literally is on pins. And both of them can literally go from one and another. They are identical. So let's screw one out. So you don't even have to uh, unscrew any cables to be to to need for the need to a uh, uh, swap it over. It's just literally undo the block, which needs a bit of a help in here. This one doesn't push out properly. It literally sits, there we go, that's a screw for now. So, uh, we just push that one out properly, here we go. It just moves away from the pins, completely move it away. And then lift it out. So here we go, so you lift one out and this is what it pretty much looks like once the block is out, it looks identical for that. So in the same thing you do as well with the other one. So uh, obviously this one is a new PLC. They look much more shiny if you are after for the shininess. So uh, that uh, probably you wanna, you will want to. So okay, okay, this one's been there for a while. So here we go. So that one falls up as well. So that's what they look like. I've seen the camera. That's what they look like. As you can see, match up perfectly. So 
not much there and they don't even have to undo the cables to swap power and that's pretty much it done as well from the bottom part of it so uh only things left now let's download the program out of this plc because i ain't got a clue what's inside it and uh convert it to transfer into a newer form of plc okay both plcs are on and if you can see if you put this in the run mode as you can see in here, no, the terminal 2 and the terminal 7 is coming on, part of the program. And obviously if you put this one on, there's nothing in it, the, the PLC is pretty much empty. And this is the connector I was talking to, RS-222 converter to a, a USB. This cable, uh, ooh, zoom in, whatever that was. This cable has been approved by Mitsubishi itself. It's not manufactured by Mitsubishi, it's manufactured by Athena. And I will leave a video in the description below where I talk a lot more about it and how to uh, set up into your computer in the description below. So the next thing, let's get, get to the computer and download the program out of this guy first. Here we go, now we're in the front of a computer. I am using a new a, uh, a screen recording software, courtesy of one of my viewers, putting a... Uh, Nice comment uh, in the description below, and that is called OBS, and I find it really good. So thank you very much. If you're watching this video, you've done me a massive favor. So anyway, uh, we're going to be using a GX Works 2 for it. And uh, first thing we're going to do is we're not going to bother with the project. We're going to go straight to the uh, downloading of the PLC. And... We're going to select this FX CPU and click OK. And in here we have to determine what sort of connections are we going to be using. And I'm using a serial USB. And let me double check down there. Have I actually plugged it in? Yep, we are good. So uh, we need to determine what sort of comma because we, we are using a USB converter, which is going to be a 10 USB converter. Uh, we need to determine which COM port. It is going, if we even though it's USB, it still goes as a COM. So uh, when you, if you need to go to, this is the Windows 10, by the way. So uh, this is how we're doing that in the Windows 10. So uh, we need to go to Manager. Usually just type in Manager and it takes you to Device Manager. Go to your uh, ports and here we go. My antenna USB to zero bridge, COM4. So uh, double click, change that to COM4. Press OK and do the communications test and voila, he knows what we is connected already and already knows what PLC we're using. And then we just click OK. Once he clicks OK, you just have to select what you want to download. We're going to take everything inside there. Why not? Press execute. Oh. And there we go. It's gonna, as you can see, it goes really slow and it has to do that twice. So I'm going to pause the video. I'll come back to you once it's done. There we go, almost done, and yep, done. So uh, then just click close, close, and here we go. That's what's inside this uh, PLC. Hell of a lot of program in there with all sorts of fancy dancy things going on. I ain't got a clue what this was used for. It was purchased from a redundant stock, so it was holding a spare, so it was pre programmed. So, the next, what we need to do is change the PLC type. So, uh, all we need to do is go to Projects and change the PLC. And in here, it's already said Devices or Instructions might, uh, might need to be modified to use. So, that's, that's a, it's usually it throws errors on it and things like that, so you should be able to see. I haven't had a problem say, uh, uh, once with it, so uh, I presume it would throw some errors if something won't go wrong. So they select what PLC you are sending this program into it. And obviously we are going like for like. So we're going for FX3G. Uh, click and OK. So obviously read all this stuff. Uh, do, do you want to change PLC? Yeah, delete devices in the outer range. Comments, reset the default connection destinations. will change according to PLC type parameter, blah, blah, blah. So I pretty much give you a bit of a bit about what's going to happen now. Then click on it, bumps and PLC type. Uh, change has been completed so now all we need to do is uh, swap the cables over and uh, go from there right cable swapped so the next thing what we need to do we need to establish communications we are a, uh, a new plc so that is going to go connection destination we're going in here and in here we need to go double click on it and uh, put the usb click ok and then let's connect this. Here we go. We're done. Uh, the reason I'm using a uh, 
uh, USB just to show you the uh, show you the difference. You can use a SC09 cable to to just throw, go from one to another. It's just this one's got a USB connection, so I I just don't show you a bit of an idea how to go from one to an, another. So next thing is left is pretty much is send this program into the PLC. So we write to the PLC and we tell him to uh, global cock. There is no comments. It's pointless to do that. So uh, execute. And there we go. You can see how much faster this is. Look at that. Done. The other one was taking roughly about probably about two, three minutes. This one's like well, five, six seconds, and it's done. And that is all pumped inside the PLC. So next, let's have a look at it, how the PLCs now compare. There we go. Now you are in front of. Uh, we are in front of the PLCs. I already unplugged the cables. So if you put in the run mode. It's got 217 on, and if you put this one in the run mode, as you can see, it's got 217 on as well. So the whole entire program has been replicated, transferred from this guy to this guy, and that's, ladies and gentlemen, how it's done. So uh, we are going to be doing as well the FX2 event series. Have a look at the uh, what PLC is, uh, crossover is for that, and we're also going to be looking at one uh, FX1S as well. So, uh, and if you're looking for any of these, these PLCs, I will link, uh, leave a link in the description below for a company called LC Automation, where you can uh, purchase uh, these PLCs from them for very, very good prices. And if you're looking for the 10% discount, of course, get in touch with IGS Electronics, and IGS Electronics will be able to sort, out for you, uh, sort that out for you. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, and I hope this makes sense and helps you out. And uh, if you like the video, smash, smash that like, subscribe, and uh, if you didn't like the video, Put a dislike, comment below what you'd like to see more from uh, Mitsubishi products. Obviously, we're not going to be just doing Mitsubishi products on this channel. There will be a lot more other uh, other, other uh, manufacturers that we're going to be playing with. It's just Mitsubishi is something that I always use, but I'm definitely keen to learn other guys as well. So having said that, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.